Coming up next, are you doing these bad morning habits? And I'm going to tell you how to get promoted. We'll take your calls and your chats, and it all starts right now. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Solutions Studios here in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about you, who you are, what you were created to do in your work, where you can do it, where you want to do it, and then the all-important, how do you get there? We're talking about the path to meaningful work. We're talking about what meaningful work is for you. What does that look like? The dream job, is it possible? The answer is yes. But why do we pursue this work? Because it matters deeply to us, all of us, long to make a contribution in this world. We do. We just simply do. No one has to teach you to do that. You just, you want to make a difference. And so we're not really chasing success here or satisfaction. We're chasing the significance that you bring to this world and how others need it from you. In other words, you were created to fill a unique role in your work. You are needed. You must do it because somebody out there needs you to be the best version of you. And so success and satisfaction are byproducts of you moving towards making that significant contribution that you were put on this planet to make. So let's help you figure that out. 844-747-2577. We'll talk a little bit later in the program how to get promoted. Some of you are on that ladder. You know the ladder you're supposed to be on. You're on that climb and you want to beat the competition. You want to get promoted. So I'm going to break this down a little bit differently than I have before. Some of the same content that I've used, but I want to add a little something to it. I want to give you three uh, really steps and then what you do within each of these steps to get promoted. It's going to make you stand out so you can step up. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. 844-747-2577. All right. So great article I want to share briefly. Uh, from Dana Brownlee. She writes this. She's a contributor uh, for Forbes. And uh, this is great. She outlines some morning habits that are, that are really big mistakes. And boy, I went through this. I thought, ooh, I can do better here. And I want to share it with you because it's so practical. Number one, waking up to a blaring alarm and then turning on the news, either on television or on your phone, getting into social media or whatever the news is. That's the first thing. Because we all know that 99.8% of news is negative. And that's what's going to be the first thought in your head, which then turns into a feeling and an emotion that can set your whole day off on the wrong path. Number two, eating unhealthy food or nothing for breakfast, skipping it all together. Now, there's all kinds of different approaches. There's the intermittent fasting and all that. Um, but, you know, the point is, is that don't eat junk. If you got a healthy routine that doesn't include breakfast, that's your opinion. Go with that. But uh, for many of you, uh, eating unhealthy things that can cause crashes, energy crashes, all that kind of stuff, uh, that's not a good way to start the day. Uh, three, checking your email first thing in the morning. This is, you know, some of you don't go to the news, but you go to the phone for email. Again, why? Why would you dump, dump, jump into your to-do list first thing in the morning? You talk about pressure, yikes, there's no peace. Have some peace in the morning. Number four, racing around trying to either pack the kids' lunch or pack their backpacks or pack your briefcase or whatever, packing your suitcase if you're traveling that day. Uh, I used to be this guy, Joe. This was me, 100%. And I, I just got to tell you, I thrive if it's just me doing that. But then when there's other people and then I got to the point where I was like, wait a second, doing this for the kids the night before is a game changer. So I started doing it for myself. Packing the night before, uh, getting everything set out, get everybody's bags ready to go, game changer. Uh, number five, not planning your driving route in advance. I thought this was interesting. For some of you have a meeting in a different place and you're just getting in the car and you're throwing in the address, you're not thinking through it. That's a good one. Because just because it, you know, it just pumps into your app, you know, like, boom, there it is. This is the way to go. You know, you may you may have should have thought through a longer route, a different route, time of day to go. That kind of stuff is really interesting. 
And then uh, this is the one that, you know, again, I, I wouldn't choose the word ignoring, but she says ignoring family members. I don't ignore my family members, but I think what the spirit of what she's saying is spot on. It's not like a, I'm not going to talk to you and give you the silent treatment, but you're going about your routine and you don't even see them. And everybody starts their day and there's just no interaction. That one stepped on my toes a little bit because we've got a rhythm. We've got a rhythm and, and maybe I need to build some more time in so that there's some relationship happening in the morning just besides the car ride. Now, I get the car ride with the kids, which is great, uh, but really interesting stuff there. So what are your habits to start the day? This is the challenge. Uh, you can take some information from that article if you want. Do your own thing, but make sure you're in, you're very intentional in you, when you start your morning. 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in. It's a toll-free number. You can also email the show, ask at kencoma.com. Reminder, the website with tons of free and resources that you can buy to speed your journey up, make it more pleasing, kencoma.com. All right, let's go to the phone. Charlotte, North Carolina is where Jade is joining us. Jade, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you? Jade, I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? I'm good. I'm excited to be on the show. I listen to the podcast a lot. Well, thank you. I'm excited to have you on. Okay, so uh, what's going on is I was a federal agent for about nine years. Um, During that, I failed to report some foreign travel, which is required just Mm -hmm. due to my own negligence. And my agency lost, a, uh, they launched a whole investigation, it was supposed to take a couple months. It took a whole year um, to make sure I'm not a spy. I'm yes, not, by the right. way. Right. Oh, that's good to know. Because <laughs> uh, I was going to have to hang up on you. I was going to get nervous immediately. <laughs> I'm not a spy. Good. I have been to Russia, but I'm not a spy. Oh, good for you. Um, <laughs> but um, at the end of that, I was just, I felt they, they brought me back to work because there was nothing, of course. But I just felt untrusted, yeah, unvalued, beat down over it. So I resigned uh, voluntarily and went on to work in a new industry. But now I've applied, I'm applying for a job back in that original original industry. And I'm wondering, is it just enough to say I resigned for that previous employment? And then I have a phone interview coming up. So I know I'm going to have to talk about this, but... Yeah, I, you know what I would do? I, what I, I thought the way you said it was really great. I would I would polish it up just a smidge, meaning be able to say it, you know, kind of give the whole enchilada. You gave me just a little bit of it. Right. Um, they're going to want more. So I would just polish it up by practicing it in your head, what you're going to say. I'd even go so far as to just record yourself. You know, like just put uh-huh. your phone down and then just kind of talk to the wall, listen back to it a few times get tight on it because you don't want anything to be lost in translation. However, um, I think you own it. I think because they're going to find out anyway. So I think you just take the elephant out of the room as soon as, I mean, as soon as possible. Just go, hey, I love the work. And simply put, I resigned because I just, it was such an emotional, uh, it was just really tough emotionally. Um, I was negligent. I was a doofus. I didn't report my trip to Russia, but they investigated me for a year and I'm a patriot. But I got to tell you that I just felt like I should move on because through the entire process, they were doing their job. Like, don't throw them under the bus. You were doing your job. I didn't I I didn't do my part. And thus it created an investigation. Well, you know, the investigation wasn't personal, but it just hurt. And I felt like, you know, I wasn't trusted anymore. And I felt like. You know, I was never going to be valued, and and so I made a move to get healthy. And the good news is, I'm healthy now. Okay. And I want to be back. And I learned okay. so much from it. In fact, I learned so much. And you combine that with the fact that I love this work so much that I am humbly back to say I learned a tough lesson. But I love this work, and I want to serve my country this way. I I just think you go that route. Okay. And go ahead. So I have a phone interview tomorrow. It's just a, it's a screening. So how early in the process do I go ahead and just kind of bring this up? Because I'm going to have to get a clearance again. They'll find, you know, it'll come up then, of oh, yeah. course. But. Uh, I think in the screening, sounds like the screening is just a basic thing. Is that right? What do you know about yes. it? Yes. So far that I know, the screening just makes sure that I would be a good fit for the position. And then they invite me to do uh, an assessment, like an online assessment. So it doesn't sound like the screening is the actual interview. Yeah, yet. no, I would not bring it up in the screening. Yeah, just go all okay. the way through because it's going to come up. And then once you get into a real conversation, just go, hey, I want to throw this out right away. I'm back. Okay. I was here before. I'm back. Here's why I left. Here's why I'm back. Awesome. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I'm proud of you. You know, Thank you. It, takes a, it takes a strong human being 
to uh, recognize what you now recognize and be willing to come back. And I just think it's going to make you a better. I, you know what I would think through? I gave you several things. I'm going to add one more thing. I would spend some time thinking through why this experience is actually going to make you more valuable to the agency. I'd give them your spin on it. Okay. You have an okay. idea? Um, yeah, like really dig into the heart behind the work. Yeah, I mean, it helped me to pay more attention to. So for me, why I didn't report it was that, oh, it's just paperwork. It's not really a huge deal. But it is apparently more than, it's more than paperwork. It's, there could be something subversive going on with people, and that's why they have those rules. That's exactly so right. That's it exactly made me pay right. more attention <laughs> yeah. to Yeah, look, just like that. And doing. you know what? And acknowledge that. Say, I got to tell you. It taught me such a valuable lesson about the detail and the the why behind things, and I get it right. because there have been agents before who have gone on a vacation in quotes, and they weren't on a vacation; they were turned or right. whatever. I mean, that, that stuff really does happen. It does. Yeah. So you just okay. own, you just own it. Okay. And you say I I I got my feelings hurt on it, and it wasn't personal. I got better. I'm not bitter, and that's why I'm back. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, you can. Thank you for your service. I can do that. Thank you for Thank you. how you served our country and that you want to come back and do it because I, I think that we sometimes watch these TV shows or movies that just, you know, I've clearly melodrama out the, oh, out God, the ears yeah. <laughs> about what you do. But we but what we we fail to realize is that that's not TV, that's real life, and you do it, and you're one of those people. And, um, and so what you do matters, and I want you to know Thank that. You. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a great American. 844-747-2577. Andy's up in Easton, Pennsylvania. Andy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you today? I'm living the dream, Andy. What's going on with you? <laughs> well, I retired from the first job. I got a second job. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that job. Basically, I transitioned from one to the other. I had a career in law enforcement. I retired. Okay. Okay. And I got another career. Uh, I'm just doing this job to basically sort of transition into don't know what I want to do when I grow up. Yeah. And um, I, I kind of came to this uh, point, I'm 51, and I'm at the point to where uh, I think I've decided I want to learn how to uh, be a teacher. And one of the things I want to do is move to Brazil and teach English. And I want to get a degree in that. And the job I'm currently in would actually pay for a degree, uh, majority of it while I'm working here at this job. This is kind of like a four or five year plan. I love this. Um, so my, my question to you, Ken, is how do I go about looking for jobs or career opportunities? I want to be able to learn how to teach English. And I, I know in Brazil that that's a, a skill that you could use in many facets down there. Yeah. Where would I go to start looking around uh, well, I would start with I would start with uh, this thing called Google. It's spelled G O O O G L E. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm being silly, but you know, honestly, the first step I think is to just research um, organizations that are hiring uh, English teachers in Brazil. Let's let's go to the source. That's where we want to end up. Let's go there. And so let's. Well, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm kind of hoping also that maybe someone's listening and they would call in and say, "Oh yeah, you should check with this company or that company." Yeah, it's so, not a bad idea, but that's the. I'm trying but, to pitch myself a little bit. Too. Well, I'm happy. Uh, so okay, folks, if you uh, know of a connection and how he can get started teaching English in Brazil, email the show askakincoma.com and put in, I want to help Andy teach English in Brazil and Madison will connect you. But Andy, that's really not the best way to go about this. Although I appreciate the effort. I love the spunk. All right. But here's the deal. Who's there are people that are hiring uh, people to teach English in Brazil. Who are they? Where are they? How many organizations are there? What are the job requirements? Do you need to go to college? Let's and just find that where... out. Because here's the yeah, deal. If you that. do, if you do need to get a degree in teaching, so if they if they're requiring a degree, but presumably they're not hiring just Americans, but if they re, if they require a degree, these organizations, um, then you go get the degree because your company right now is going to pay for most of it. That's a wonderful, wonderful option. But before we decide that, let's find out. And um, this is not difficult. But that's what I would do. 
I just want to do this, actually. If you know, I've never done this before on the show, I'm going to do this. This is fun. Because if this is the epiphany that hits me, um, then then I would go online, and, and I'm just going to do something really quick, Joe. The, all the silence drives him nuts, so stay with me here. Here, 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 but hear me pecking. I'm just going to see what comes up. And if it comes up, I'm going to tell you all what I just typed in Google. But I, this is this is how we do this. Okay. I typed in organizations who hire English teachers in Brazil. Duh. This is what I typed in on the Google. First thing that comes up. Andy, are you paying attention? I'm right here with you. International... T-E-F academy.com. That's the website. I'm not endorsing these folks. I'm just doing real time. I want to teach y'all something. And sometimes we make this so much more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, and it says teaching English in Brazil, English teaching jobs, um, teaching English as a foreign language. I think that's what T-E-F-L stands for. Um, English teachers in Brazil. And it's, it's got a website. Okay. Look at this. Do, do I need to teach? Do, excuse me. Do I need a degree? To teach English in Brazil. To teach English in Brazil, make sure you understand what is and what is not required. Andy, are you still paying attention? I'm still here. You need a teaching English as a foreign language certification. You need an understanding of the types of English teaching jobs that are available. And then you need savings for startup costs. A four-year college degree is not required to secure a job in Brazil. However... It is still strongly preferred by employers. Now, Andy, that took me 37 seconds to get there. So now we know. That's now just. I know Google. Yeah, so here's the deal. <laughs> Even though I, I have tried to look for Google and I, I've looked around, but I thought maybe you had some other outside information off well, the top of your head. My man, I'm, I'm host of the Ken Coleman show. I'm not, I can't be everywhere all the time. I mean, how do I know all this? I can't know all this, but I just looked it up. Are you telling me you knew all this information before you called? No, sir. I didn't hear about that one. Yay. That all right. Woohoo. Here's my point. I'm having fun with you, Andy, but I'm trying to teach the rest of the audience the same thing I'm teaching you. Go look. Go look. You're in stage two. It's my seven stages to meaningful work. Stage one is get clear. Stage two is get qualified. Right now, you have two options. You can go get the certification, teaching English as a foreign language certification. Probably a million places in the world to do that. And I'll bet your company would pay for that too. Or it is preferred by these organizations in Brazil that you have a degree, so you can go get that too. And so if you decide to go the degree route, uh, start making connections. You're going to have several years to do that. If you want to go the certification route, why don't you go on vacation with your certification? Start making connections while you're over there. You might just get in. By the way, Andy, oh, the proximity I, principle I works in Brazil too. Yeah, I've certainly made some connections already. I've been asking around. So but, if uh, I were I you, maybe you knew some big Fortune 500 companies that no. you could direct me to. No, I'm sorry. I there's only so much time in the day. I don't have time to read up on that. But the good news is you can find that. I will do that. Thank All right, you. you're the man. Go get it, man. You got this. How do I get how do I get in? That's how. Who's doing it? What's required? How much is it going to cost me? How long is it going to take? There you go. It's amazing what's on the Google, isn't it, Joe? Yes, it is. See, I didn't even know that. I had no idea what are the requirements to teach English in Brazil. But I'm having fun with Andy, okay, but let me just say this. He, Andy's calling me up thinking that I've got this giant Rolodex in my head. Oh, yeah, hold on the line. Madison will send you uh, a list of 12 Fortune 500 companies that are looking for somebody right now. That's what he wants me to do. It's not my job. It's not my job. And and and, and I'm going to tell you something. Um, again, not picking on Andy. He's a great example of the way we think. I don't know. No, I want to teach English in Brazil. Let me call the Ken Coleman show if he if he knows where I should go. <laughs> what? I barely know what I'm doing the rest of the day. I certainly don't know about teaching English in Brazil. But there's a process by which we can all find the answers that we're looking for. All right, I've made my point.
Quick break. Coming back uh, in about 30 seconds, we'll get to the chat room. And I'm going to teach some new content on how to get promoted. Some of you want to get a leg up. You want to beat the competition. I'm going to tell you how. This is The Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. All right, we're about ready to get here in the old laptop for your chat questions, but I want to mention something um, that I want to do more of every day because we've got people that watch this show live. You watch it later. Uh, you're coming to us from all around the globe. And I mentioned Ramsey Solutions from time to time. You're going, uh, some of you may not know what that is. Well, Ramsey Solutions is the mothership of the Dave Ramsey Show, which has been around for almost 40 years. And Dave Ramsey's a legendary icon, Hall of Fame broadcaster, best-selling author. His studio is about 15 feet that way through the door. And so this company is founded upon his financial principles called the seven baby steps. Essentially, it's the clear path to living financially like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one else, which means no debt, no credit cards. We say that kind of stuff. And we've got a plan, seven baby steps. Baby step one is $1,000 in, in your bank account for just rainy day emergencies. Step two, you go really hardcore, crazy, gazelle intense towards paying off your debts. We say smallest debt to largest debt to create momentum. Payment on the smallest debt when you paid off, you just roll that into the next smallest or the next largest if you when you work your way up to the largest. And that's momentum. You pay everything off. Okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be the house. All right? That's down the road. But baby step three is now we're going to save three to six months expenses for emergency. If you were to get laid off, hello, COVID. Baby step four, 15% of your income now to retirement. Five, saving for college. Six, pay off the house. Seven, live generously. Okay. So that's the underpinning of what I talk about when I talk about getting your financial house in order. And some of you, um, you can still, and by the way, I make this very clear for Dave's audience that called me. Can I pursue the dream? Can I walk through your seven stages? Get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job, give yourself away. Can I do that while I'm paying off debt? The answer is yes. But you can't do it as fast sometimes. Can't do as much. Can't do it as well. And there are some times where I'll go, nope, pause. There, You're to a stage in my seven stages where we can't get qualified because financially we're still in debt. So there's some that you can do. There's things you can do. But getting your financial house in order, living debt-free, can allow you to not only get to the dream faster, that meaningful work, but also expand that much better so you can get there faster and do it on a bigger scale if your financial house in order so if you're new uh to all things ramsey i want to make sure that you're going to ramsey plus just to kick the tires on what we have called the ultimate membership to get financially free three pieces financial peace university which is a nine-week course you can watch it at your own pace it's going to teach you that process that i just walked through briefly the baby steps. The second is the Every Dollar Budget app. There's no budget app in the world like it on your phone, on your computer, wherever you want it, and it can connect to your bank account. And you know where the money's coming in, where it's going out. It's huge, game changer, game changer. And then once you get in those baby steps that I went through briefly just a few moments ago, we've got the Baby Steps app, which allows you to track your progress. It's a scoreboard, and for those of you that got to knock out a lot of debt, it gives you that extra focus that you need. DaveRamsey.com is the website, and you can sign up for a free trial. I believe it's 90 days. And uh, kick the tires, try it out, and I think it's a game changer. And it is, you got to have your financial house in order to really get where you want to go in, in your pursuit of purpose in your work. So it's, it's a combination. And I can help you with the money questions. Uh, for those of you who watch this program, you're going, hey, what do I do here? How's this going to affect my journey to 
the dream job. 844-747-2577. To the chat room we go. Uh, Phil writes in, uh, Ken, I'm struggling with balancing my work life with my family. I can't seem to unplug. Well, we need to get to the source of why. There is, in my opinion, there's fear driving that. I just, I just, there's no way around that, that it's not fear. When somebody says I can't unplug, well, first of all, you're wrong. You can. It's almost like Joe would be fun if I could just beam myself into Phil's house, 7.30 tonight. Wife and kids are doing their routine. He's over there deep in the laptop. I just walk up to him. He doesn't even know what hit him. I grab his laptop and I take it. Boom, I'm gone. Poof. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, and just watch him have to function. And it's in those moments, as silly as that little example is, where you go, life is actually going to continue if I don't send these seven emails tonight. In fact, not only is it going to continue, it's already happening anyway. And you are in a hole. You're in this self-absorbed space that you can't turn the work off. It's self-absorption is what it is. And fear is driving that. Fear that you're not going to get the promotion. Fear of... Uh, that you might lose your job. I mean, there fear that uh, you have no value with your family, so you'd rather just kind of come over here. Fear that my family doesn't want to spend time with me. I don't know. This is one of those where I'd love Phil to call me. Now, this is the type of call where if you're brave enough, and we could change your name, by the way, and location. Uh, if you want to get nitty-gritty, I'll get nitty-gritty with you on this. There is a fear or two or three that's driving this, I can't seem to unplug and that's dangerous i'm all for doing work you're created to do and feeling that pleasure in that work but i and i love what i do i was on the air for five straight hours yesterday did this program for two hours then went next door after a quick pit stop and was on for three more hours with dave ramsey now i'm gonna tell you something joe you know this i'm brain dead i didn't want to work last night even if even if i love it, i don't want to do it I want to go home, have a glass of red wine, have a smoke, cigar out on the front porch. I, that To me, I'm unplugged. It doesn't get any more unplugged than that. By the way, for those of you who enjoy a good cigar, which I do, uh, Madison loves the, 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 the red water. She loves the wine. I'm not a fan of dessert wine in general. You're not either? Okay. Stacy loves it. It's too sweet. It is. It's thick. Ugh. I know. However, she had a dessert wine bottle open, and I had seen it. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. But I really wanted to just relax with a cigar. It just allows me to think, and kids were doing homework. So I just stepped out real quick, about 15, 20 minutes, and just chill time. It was it was night. It wasn't too cold yet. And I got the thought, I'm going to try the dessert wine with the cigar. And I did. And I got to tell you, very nice. Because what you've got is you've got the you got the cigar, the flavor there, and then the sweet. So Madison, I'm not saying you should try cigars, but I, I I do think that that's a nice combo for those of you out there, guys. You like a good stogue, which I do. Try the dessert wine with it. Not bad. And that's a classic traditional thing anyway. With, with a port, I know everyone's looking at me like, really, this is the rabbit hole that you're going down. I'd like to give good information wherever I can. And that's a nice combo. You know what a good combo is? This is the only way I'll drink dessert wine. Poured over a little vanilla ice cream. It's Come pretty on. good. Like a, like a syrup. Are you serious? Yeah, it's pretty good. People do this? Oh, yeah. Nathan, have you heard of this before? Okay. He's not heard of it. Joe, have you heard of this? No. But if I did, I'd call it Ripple. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. Wait a second. <laughs> I'm not knocking it. I got to tell you, you threw me on that one. Yeah, it's good. I'm going to try it. Yeah, It's the only way I'll drink it. I'm going to try it. All right. All right. Back to the chat room. By the way, here was the point I was making before I got distracted. I love my work as much as anybody on the planet. Sometimes you get, you, I just don't work at night and I, I need a break. Why? I need to be refreshed. So I'm giving my best the next morning. All right. D writes in, how do you go for applying for jobs uh, when you're moving to a different state? How do you go about applying for jobs when you're moving to a different state? Should I wait to apply until I'm physically in the state or apply ahead of time? That's up to you. 
uh, I'm the guy that if I know I'm moving, I want to get a head start. So I'm talking to friends and family. This is the web of connections, content, and the proximity principle. I'm talking to friends and family. I'm making connections right and left. Hey, do you know anybody who works in that city? I'm looking at these companies. you know anybody over there? Um, I'm starting to apply now with that web of connections and the proximity principle. And they go, hey, uh, when are you planning to move in? You know, boom, well, I'll move in as soon as you want me. I'd start now. That would be me. All right, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Okay, I'm going to teach here on uh, how to get promoted. Now, I've talked about the three things you need to do um, and the five qualities you need to develop to get promoted, and I'm going to remind you of that content. But I, I, I want you two to be able to get this. This is the game changer. There's three Three things here I want you to think about if you're sitting there going, Ken, I want to get promoted. I haven't gotten promoted. I feel like I should be promoted or I'm ready to start kind of going towards that. What do I do? Here you go. Ready? Number one, are we putting this on the lower third? Okay, great. Number one, you got to want it. Now, let's just unpack that very briefly. What does that mean? You got to want it. If you want to get promoted, you've got to say, I'm willing to put myself out there because I might face rejection, and that's going to sting. And, and you will realize that. And, and if you don't want it bad enough, the possibility of failure or rejection, whatever you want to call it, will keep you from going for it. I'm just telling you. So you got to want it. I mean, you got to see a future, a desirable future that you long for. I mean, we're talking heart-level stuff. If you want to get promoted bad enough, then you'll do the rest of these things. But if you don't want it, if you don't see a desired future attached to this promotion, you won't go for it. So you got to ask yourself, how bad do I want it? And this would be the example. When you ask yourself that question, do you say, that'd ah, be nice? Or do you say, ah, I don't really care. Or is it, oh yeah, oh yeah, I want this. I want this. And it better register like that. If it doesn't, hold off. Because I don't think your heart's really in it. All right, number two, you got to earn it. First is you got to want it. And then it's you got to earn it. Now, what is that? Now, this is where the three things that you have to do, the actions you must take. That's know your role, clarity. That means you really know what your leader and your teammate expects of you, your teammates. What's the organization say is a win? So that's knowing your role. That's clarity. Number two, accept your role. That's attitude. Have a good attitude. Don't be walking around going, oh, I'm just doing this until I get a chance at a promotion. Nope, that, that is not going to work. Have a great attitude. Appreciate the opportunity that you're in now, which could set you up for the next. And then three, maximize your role. This is going way beyond what is expected of you. People need to feel like you own the company, not because of the way you act, but because of because of the results you deliver. You're staying early, you're coming in early, you're staying late, you're picking up trash, you're doing whatever. People go, man, do you actually own the company? You care this deeply about this? That's what you want people saying. That's maximizing your role. And then there's the five qualities you need to develop. Number one, are you likable? Work on being likable. Just general, all around likability. Number two, of the five qualities, are you coachable? Do you accept instruction and correction well? You got to learn how to do that because you will need to be instructed and you will need to be corrected. Do you receive it well or, is it, or do you act like it's the Grand Inquisition and you get your feelings hurt and you go play Eeyore the rest of the day? Third, quality you need to develop. Are you reliable? Are you a man or woman of your word? Do you show up when they expect you to show up? Do you do what you're going to say you're going to do? Fourth, are you adaptable? This is a biggie. People that get promoted are, are people that are adaptable. They're okay with change. They just deal with change when it comes at them. They don't get grumpy about it. They don't get scared. They just get busy. Are you adaptable? And finally, are you honorable? This is just about ethics, integrity, the way you uh, approach your work. Are you an honorable person? You develop those five qualities. And by the way, if you feel like you're a one on all those, and I don't believe that for anybody, but you can become a 10 on all of those. So that's how you earn it. You become promotable 
because of the things you do and the way you are. That's what I just laid out for you. Then finally, you got to share it. See, once you have earned it, then you start telling people, hey, I want to step up. I want more. Here's where people mix it up, Joe and Madison. Most people do, okay, you got to want it, and then you got to share it, and, and they think that's it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got to earn it first. You got to earn it to the degree that people go, they're already coming to you before you share it. But then when you share that you want to be promoted, you're sharing from a place of tremendous credibility because you've earned it. People go, yeah, that makes total sense. We've already been thinking about you as, as being promotable. So those are the three steps. You got to want it, you got to earn it, and you got to share it. You got to tell people. Don't be ashamed because if you've earned it, there's no reason for you to tiptoe around it. Say, hey, I want more. I want to do more. And, and when you're the, those five qualities or those five qualities that you've got that I mentioned in, in, in the step two, you got to earn it. Again, you're not going to come across the wrong way. It's impossible if you focus on those five qualities. So that's how you beat the competition. That's how you get promoted. And again, you do it that way. You don't have to share it a lot. When you share it, it's more about people going, oh, they're ready. Because they were already thinking that you should be promoted. They're already thinking that they should promote you. That's how you keep moving up the ladder, folks. That's the secret sauce. All right. Unfortunately, my time is almost up. But before I let you go, I want you to know that you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. <laughs>